The Shulchan Aruch Hebrew, Sulahan Arwik ul Han a u Kai, literally, set table, sometimes dubbed in English as the Code of Jewish Law, is the most widely consulted of the various legal codes in Judaism. It was authored in Safed today in Israel by Joseph Caro in 1563 and published in Venice two years later. Together with its commentaries, it is the most widely accepted compilation of Jewish law ever written. The Halachic rulings in the Shulchan Aruch generally follow Sephardic law and customs, whereas Ashkenazi Jews will generally follow the Halachic rulings of Moses Isorals, whose glosses to the Shulchan Aruch note where the Sephardic and Ashkenazi customs differ. These glosses are widely referred to as the mappa, literally the tablecloth, to the Shulchan Aruch's set table. Almost all published editions of the Shulchan Aruch include this gloss, and the term Shulchan Aruch has come to denote both Karo's work as well as Isorals, with Karo usually referred to as the Mechaber author, and Isorals as the Rema, an acronym of Rabbi Moshe Isorals. <laughs> Structure the Shulchan Aruch and its forerunner, the Beit Yosef, follow the same structure as Arba Aturim by Rabbi Jacob ben Asher. These books were written from the standpoint of Sephardi Minhag. Other works entitled Shulchan Aruch or Kitzur Shulchan Aruch cited below are written from the standpoint of Ashkenazi Minhag. There are four sections, each subdivided into many chapters and paragraphs. Orich Hayam, Laws of Prayer and Synagogue, Sabbath, Holidays. Yora Dia, laws of Kashrut, religious conversion, mourning, laws pertaining to Israel, laws of family purity. Even Hazer, laws of marriage, divorce, and related issues. Choshen Mishpat, laws of finance, financial responsibility, damages, personal and financial, and the rules of the Bet Din, as well as the laws of witnesses. Topic, page layout. Topic. References are given in two ways, those to the Shulchan Aruch are found in the later work B. Ur ha Gola, and those to Isorals. Work are in brackets after the latter's comments. There is disagreement on the authorship of the references to Isorals. Remarks, as they are occasionally incorrect. Since the 17th century, the Shulchan Aruch has been printed with Isorals. Annotations in small Rashi print interspersed with Karo's text. As commentaries on the work proliferated, more sophisticated printing styles became required, similar to those of the Talmud. Beth Yosef Its premise and style the Shulchan Aruch is largely based on an earlier work by Karo, titled Beth Yosef Hebrew, House of Joseph. The latter is a vast and comprehensive commentary on Jacob ben Asher's 1269 to 1343 Arba, Aturim, Tur, citing and analyzing the Talmudic, Geonic, and major subsequent Halachic authorities. This work analyzes the theories and conclusions of those authorities cited by the Tur, and also examines the opinions of authorities not mentioned by him. Caro began the Beth Yosef in 1522 at Adrianople, finished it in 1542 at Safed in the Land of Israel, he published it in 1550-59. Thirty-two authorities, beginning with the Talmud and ending with the works of Rabbi Israel Iserlein 1390-1460 and known as the Terumath HaDeshen, are summarized and critically discussed in Beth Yosef. No other rabbinical work compares with it in wealth of material. Caro evidences not only an astonishing range of reading, covering almost the entire rabbinic literature up to his time, but also remarkable powers of critical investigation. In the introduction to his monumental compilation, Caro clearly states the necessity of, and his reasons for undertaking such a work. The expulsion of the Jews from the Iberian Peninsula and the invention of printing had endangered the stability of religious observances on their legal and ritual sides. 
By the 15th century, the Jews in Spain and the Jews of Portugal followed two main traditions, the older tradition of Maimonides, whose school of thought is heir to the Talmudic academies of Babylonia via the scholars of North Africa, and the Ashkenazi school of the Tosafists whose tradition is based on analytical thinking related to Pilpul, a methodology that was developed in the yeshivo of France and Germany that taught the importance of the minhagim or customs of the country. Jews then living in the different kingdoms of Spain had their standard authorities to which they appealed. The most prominent of these were Maimonides' Rambam, whose opinions were accepted in Andalusia, Valencia, Israel and the Near East, Namanides and Solomon ben Adret, whose opinions were accepted in Catalonia, and Asher ben Jehiel and his family, of German origin, whose opinions were accepted in Castile. When the Spanish Portuguese exiles came to the various communities in the East and West, where usages entirely different from those to which they had been accustomed prevailed, the question naturally arose whether the newcomers, some of whom were men of greater learning than the members of the host communities in Europe, should be ruled by the latter, or vice versa. The proliferation of printed books, moreover, dramatically increased the availability of halakhic literature, so that many half-educated persons, finding themselves in possession of legal treatises, felt justified in following any ancient authority at will. Caro undertook his Beth Yosef to remedy this problem, quoting and critically examining in his book the opinions of all the major authorities then known. Although the Shulchan Aruch is largely a codification of the rulings of the Beth Yosef, it includes various rulings that are not mentioned at all in the Beth Yosef, because after completing the Beth Yosef, Caro read opinions in books he hadn t seen before, which he then included in the Shulchan Aruch. In his famous methodological work Yad Malachi, Malachi ben Jacob ha Cohen cites a later Halashik authority Shmuel Abuhab who reports rumors that the Shulchan Aruch was a summary of Karo's earlier rulings in Beth Yosef which he then gave to certain of his students to edit and compile. He concludes that this would then account for those seemingly self-contradictory instances in the Shulchan Aruch. The standard authorities Topic. Caro initially intended to rely on his own judgment relating to differences of opinion between the various authorities, especially where he could support his own view based on the Talmud. But he abandoned this idea because, as he wrote, "...who has the courage to rear his head aloft among mountains, the heights of God?" And also because he may have thought, though he does not mention his conclusion, that he could gain no following if he set up his authority against that of the ancient scholars. Hence Caro adopted the halakot of Rabbi Isaac Alfasi the Rif, Maimonides the Rambam, and Asher ben Jehiel the Rosh as his standards, accepting as authoritative the opinion of two of the three, except in cases where most of the ancient authorities were against them or in cases where there was already an accepted custom contrary to his ruling. The net result of these last exceptions is that in a number of cases Caro rules in favor of the Catalan school of Namanides and Ben Adret, thus indirectly reflecting Ashkenazi opinions, even against the consensus of Alphasi and Maimonides. Caro very often decides disputed cases without necessarily considering the age and importance of the authority in question, expressing simply his own views. He follows Maimonides' example, as seen in Mishnah Torah the Yad Hachizaka, rather than that of Jacob ben Asher, who seldom decides between ancient authorities. Several reasons induced Caro to connect his work with the Tur instead of Maimonides' Code. In the first place, the Tur, although not considered as great an authority as Maimonides' Code was much more widely known, the latter being recognized only among the Spanish Jews, while the former enjoyed a high reputation among the Ashkenazim and Sephardim, as well as the Italian Jews. Secondly, it was not Caro's intention to write a code similar in form to Maimonides' work, he intended to give not merely the results of his investigations, but also the investigations themselves. He wished not only to aid the officiating rabbi in the performance of his duties, but also to trace for the student the development of particular laws from the Talmud through later rabbinical literature. Unlike the Tur, Maimonides' Code includes all fields of Jewish law, of both present-day relevance and those dealing with prior and future times such as laws of sacrifices, Messiah, kings, etc. For Caro, whose interest lay in ruling on the practical issues, the Tur seemed a better choice. Topic. Moses Isorals Topic. The REMA 
Moses Isorals started writing his commentary on the Arba Turim, Darke Moshe, at about the same time as Yosef Karo. Karo finished his work Bet Yosef first, and it was first presented to the REMA as a gift from one of his students. Upon receiving the gift, the REMA could not understand how he had spent so many years unaware of Karo's efforts. After looking through the Bet Yosef, the REMA realized that Karo had mainly relied upon Sephardic Paschum. In place of Karo, S three standard authorities. Isoral cites the later authorities, chiefly based on the works of Yaakov Molin, Israel Isserline, and Israel Bruna, together with the Franco-German Tosafists, as criteria of opinion. Darke Masha to Yorida. Ah, thirty-five. While the Rosh on many occasions based his decision on these sources, Isorals gave them more prominence in developing practical legal rulings. By incorporating these other opinions, Isorals actually addressed some major criticisms regarding what many viewed as the arbitrary selection of the three authorities upon whose opinions Caro based his work. After realizing this, the REMA shortened his work, Dark Hay Moshe, on ter focusing only on rulings which differ from Bet Yosef. The Halashik rulings in the Shulchan Aruch generally follow the Sephardic custom. The REMA added his glosses and published them as a commentary on the Shulchan Aruch, specifying whenever the Sephardic and Ashkenazic customs differ. These glosses are referred to as the mappa, literally, the tablecloth, to the Shulchan Aruch's set table. Almost all published editions of the Shulchan Aruch include this gloss. The importance of the minhag, prevailing local custom is also a point of dispute between Caro and Isorals. While Caro held fast to original authorities and material reasons, Isorals considered the minhag as an object of great importance, and not to be omitted in a codex. This point, especially, induced Isorals to write his glosses to the Shulchan Aruch, that the customs minhagim of the Ashkenazim might be recognized, and not be set aside through Caro's reputation. Reception Topic. Karo wrote the Shulchan Aruch in his old age, for the benefit of those who did not possess the education necessary to understand the Beth Yosef. The format of this work parallels that adopted by Jacob ben Asher in his Arba Turim, but more concisely, without citing sources. This book, which for centuries was, and essentially still is, the Code of rabbinical Judaism for all ritual and legal questions that arose after the destruction of the Temple in Jerusalem, has a remarkable history. The author himself had no very high opinion of the work, remarking that he had written it chiefly for young students. Shulchan Aruch, Introduction. He never refers to it in his responsa, but always to the Beth Yosef. The Shulchan Aruch achieved its reputation and popularity not only against the wishes of the author, but, perhaps, through the very scholars who criticized it. The history of the Shulchan Aruch is, in a way, identical with the history of rabbinical literature of the Jews in Poland for a period of two centuries. Recognition or denial of Karo's authority lay entirely with the Polish Talmudists. German Jewish authorities had been forced to give way to Polish ones as early as the beginning of the 16th century. Karo had already been opposed by several Sephardic contemporaries, Yom Tob Zahalon, who designated the Shulchan Aruch as a book for children and ignoramuses in his responsa, number 67, beginning, and Jacob Castro, whose work Eric Ha Shulchan consists of critical glosses to the Shulchan Aruch. Moses Isorals and Solomon Luria the Maharshal, were Karo's first important adversaries in Eastern Europe. Further in response to those who wished to force the rulings of the Shulchan Aruch upon those communities following Rambam, Karo wrote, Who is he whose heart conspires to approach forcing congregations who practice according to the Rambam Maimonides of blessed memory, to go by any one of the early or latter-day Torah authorities? Is it not a case of a fortiori, that regarding the school of Shammai, that the Halakha does not go according to them? They, the Talmudic sages, said. If one practices like the school of Shammai, he may do so, but according to their leniencies and their stringencies. The Rambam is the greatest of all the Torah authorities, and all the communities of the land of Israel and the Arab-controlled lands and the West, North Africa, practice according to his word and accepted him upon themselves as their chief rabbi. Whoever practices according to him with his leniencies and his stringencies, why coerce them to budge from him? 
and all the more so if also their fathers and forefathers practiced accordingly, for their children are not to turn right or left from the Rambam of blessed memory. And even if communities that practice according to the Rosh or other authorities like him became the majority, they cannot coerce the minority of congregations practicing according to the Rambam of blessed memory, to practice like they do. And there is no issue here concerning the prohibition against having two courts in the same city. Lo tithe gotta do. Since every congregation should practice according to its original custom, similarly, many later Halashik authorities predicated the acceptance of the authority of the Shulchan Aruch on the lack of an existing and widely accepted custom to the contrary. Eventually, though, the rulings of the Shulchan Aruch became the accepted standard not only in Europe and the diaspora, but even in the land of Israel where they had previously followed other authorities. Topic. Criticism by Caro's contemporaries Topic. Following its initial appearance, many rabbis criticized the appearance of this latest code of Jewish law, echoing similar criticisms of previous codes of law. Topic. Rabbi Judah Lo Ben Bezalel Topic. Rabbi Judah Lo Ben Bezalel (1520–1609), known as the Maharal (1520–1609), writes in Nedivoth Olam Nediv Hatara end of chapter 15. Topic: <laughs> Rabbi Shmuel Idols. Topic. Rabbi Shmuel Idols (1555–1631), known as the Maharsha criticizes those who rule directly from the Shulchan Aruch without being fully conversant with the Talmudic sources of the ruling. In these generations, those who rule from the Shulchan Aruch without knowing the reasoning and Talmudic basis are among the destroyers of the world and should be protested. <laughs> Rabbi Yoel Circus Another prominent critic of the Shulchan Aruch was Rabbi Yoel Circus (1561–1640), author of a commentary to the Arba Turim entitled Bayath Chadash, commonly abbreviated as Bach, and Rabbi Meir Ben Gedalia. It is impossible to rule in most cases based on the Shulchan Aruch, as almost all his words lack accompanying explanations, particularly when writing about monetary law. Besides this, we see that many legal doubts arise daily, and are mostly the subject of scholarly debate, necessitating vast wisdom and proficiency to arrive at a sufficiently sourced ruling. Other criticisms the strongest criticism against all such codes of Jewish law is the contention that they inherently violate the principle that halakha must be decided according to the later sages. This principle is commonly known as Hilkita ke vatre. The halakha follows the later ones. A modern commentator, Rabbi Menachem Elon, explains. The controversy itself may explain why the Shulchan Aruch became an authoritative code, despite significant opposition, and even against the will of its author, while Maimonides' 1135-1204 Mishnah Torah rulings were not necessarily accepted as binding among the Franco-German Jews, perhaps owing to Abraham ben David's 1110-1180 known as the Ravid criticism and influence. The answer may lie in the fact that the criticism by Ravid undermined confidence in Maimonides' work, while Isorals who actually corresponded with Caro does not simply criticize, but supplements Caro's work extensively, with the result that the Ashkenazim then accepted the Shulchan Aruch, assuming that together with Isorals' glosses it was a reliable authority. This then became broadly accepted among Jewish communities around the world as the binding Jewish legal code. Topic. Praise Topic. The later major Halashik authorities defer to both Karo and Isorals and cite their work as the baseline from which further Halashik rulings evolve. In one of many similar statements by his peers reflecting this unique authority, the 17th-century scholar Joshua Hashel ben Joseph writes that 
from their wells do we drink and should a question arise on their work, not for this shall we come to annul their words, rather we must study further as much as we can, and if we are unable to resolve our question then we will ascribe it to our own lack of knowledge and not as a reason to annul the words of these geniuses." Various Halashik authorities also make note of the unique divine assistance with which both Karo and Isserles were blessed, and which serves to further bolster their authority. Rabbi Jonathan Abishitz in particular writes at length about how the great breadth of the work would make it impossible to constantly come to the correct conclusion if not for the Spirit of God. Therefore, says Abishitz, one cannot rely on a view not presented by the Shulchan Aruch. Rabbi Yehuda Heller Kahana, however, says that Abishitz's reasoning is far fetched. He contends that the reason one cannot rely on a view not formulated in the Shulchan Aruch is because the Shulchan Aruch was accepted by all of Jewry. Topic. Major commentaries Topic. A large body of commentaries have appeared on the Shulchan Aruch, beginning soon after its publication. The first major gloss, Hagahat, by R.E.M.A. Moses Isorals was published shortly after the Shulchan Aruch appeared. Isorals, student, Rabbi Yehoshua Fak HaKohen published Sefermi. Irith Enayim on Choshen Mishpat, abbreviated as Sema, several decades after the main work. Important works by the later authorities Akarinim include but are not limited to Megan Avraham, Abraham's Shield, by Rabbi Avraham Gombiner on Orich Hayim, Tere Zahav, Rose of Gold, abbreviated as Taz by Rabbi David Halevi Siegel on Orich Hayim, Yore Deah and even Ha Ezer, Siftei Cohen. The Lips of the Kohen, abbreviated as Shach by Rabbi Shabbatai Ha Kohen on Yore Deah and Choshen Mishpat, Beth Shmuel by Rabbi Samuel Phoebus and Chelkath Mekokik by Rabbi Moses Lima on Even Ha Ezer, Bar Hedav, Well Explained, by Yehuda ben Shimon Ashkenazi and Zechariah Mendel ben Aryeh Lieb, Peri Chadash, New Fruit, by Hezekiah da Silva, Peri Megadam, Dainty Fruit, by Joseph ben Mayer Tiamam Sharei Teshiva, Gates of Answer, by Chaim Mordecai Margoliat Machatzit HaShekel, Half a Shekel, by Rabbi Samuel Neta Halevi. While these major commentaries enjoy widespread acceptance, some early editions of the Shulchan Aruch were self published primarily in the late 17th and early 18th centuries with commentaries by various rabbis, although these commentaries never achieved significant recognition. A wealth of later works include commentary and exposition by such Halashik authorities as the Ketzith Ha Choshen and Avnei Miluam, Nedivoth Ha Mishpat, the Vilna Gaon, Rabbi Yeshekel Landau, Dagal Mervava, Rabbis Akiva Eger, Moses Sofer, and Chaim Joseph David Azulai, Berkei Yosef, whose works are widely recognized and cited extensively in later Halashik literature. In particular, Mishnah Buryura, which summarizes and decides amongst the later authorities on the Orich Chaim section of Shulchan Aruch has achieved widespread acceptance. It is frequently even studied as a standalone commentary, since it is assumed to discuss all or most of the views of the major commentaries on the topics that it covers. Topic. Later collations Topic. In the late 18th century, there were several attempts to recompile the major halakhic opinions into a simpler, more accessible form. Rabbi Schnorr Zalman of Liadi wrote a Shulchan Aruch at the behest of the Hasidic leader, Rabbi Dovber of Mezrich. To distinguish this work from Karo's, it is generally referred to as Shulchan Arik Harav. Rabbi Abraham Danzig was the first in the Lithuanian Jewish community to attempt a summary of the opinions in the above-mentioned works in his Chaye Adam and Chakmath Adam. Similar works are Ba. Er Haidav and Shah. Arei Teshava, Piche Teshava, usually published as commentaries in most editions of the Shulchan Aruch, as well as Kitzer Shulchan Aruch by Rabbi Shlomo Gansfried of Hungary. Danzig. S. and Gansfried's works do not follow the structure of the Shulchan Aruch, but given their single-voiced approach, are considered easier to follow for those with less background in Halacha. The Mishnah Barora, the main work of Halakha by Rabbi Yisrael Meir Kagan the Chaim, 
is a collation of the opinions of later authorities on the Orich Chaim section of the Shulchan Aruch. Aruch Hashulchan, by Rabbi Yeshiel Michel Epstein, is a more analytical work attempting the same task from a different angle, and covering all sections of the Shulchan Aruch. The former, though narrower in scope, enjoys much wider popularity and is considered authoritative by many adherents of Orthodox Judaism, especially among those typically associated with Ashkenazic yeshivas. The Ben Ish Chai, Kaf Ha'achem, and much more recently, the Yaqat Yosef are similar works by Sephardic rabbis for their communities. Halacha Yomit Sections of the Shulchan Aruch are studied in many Jewish schools throughout the world on a daily basis. There is also a daily study program known as the Halacha Yomit. References External links Topic Topic Articles Topic Initial text of this article from the 1906 Public Domain Jewish Encyclopedia Historical background on when Rabbi Caro wrote the Shulchan Aruch and why from the 1906 Public Domain Jewish Encyclopedia Topic. Study resources Topic. Hebrew edition online Shulchan Aruch Limited English translation includes chapters not in Wikisource as of August 2010. The Safaria Library includes translations of most of Ibn Hazer, and a small part of the rest of Sulchan Aruch. Torah.org Orich Chaim Summary, covers the whole book. Torah.org Yora Dia Summary, covers the whole book. Mishnah Barora section External links includes links to resources which translate not just parts of the Mishnah Barora, but also the corresponding parts of Orich Chaim. English translations of more of the Shulchan Aruch. <laughs>